My name is Ana Esteviolens. I am originally from Spain and I live in Austin, Texas. This is my show at Women and Their Work, Studies for Future Objects. So the inspiration for the central piece, which is right behind me, um, comes from um, a cardboard piece that I found last Christmas when we were shopping. Um, I saw this Santa, Santa's uh, made out of chocolate. Um, and when I grabbed one, I immediately discovered this box divider that was in the box with all the Santas. So uh, I, f I, I really saw a lot of possibilities in that piece. And to, yeah, I've been looking at that piece forever. And, and then here at Women in the Work, I had the opportunity to make it, to enlarge it and turn it into an installation. So the piece is titled uh, Dividing Structure with 22 Ovals. And what I did for this show was I enlarged it to a human scale because I really wanted to be inside that structure. And I imagine that it would offer a lot of um, possibilities for the viewer. And yeah, so that's why I uh, decided to, to make it 76 inches tall uh, so that the, the cutouts, the ovals, would, would fit the human body. And it's actually a walkable piece. So you can very carefully go inside and, you know, get a peek of all the, uh, all the views and overlappings and all the illusions that happen in the space with the piece. So besides the central piece, I have been working for the last year and a half on a series of new pieces that are the weavings that are surrounding the piece. And I work with the weavings separately, but at the same time, I was looking at the central piece and I only saw them together when we installed the exhibition. But for me, the exhibition, the, the whole installation works together almost like a compass where the central piece creates this crazy movement that the weavings stop, like the weavings being maybe the four cardinal points that anchor the space for the viewer. So the weavings in this exhibition are all made by hand using a backstrap loom. Um, the backstrap loom is a very ancient technique uh, that I I had the fortune to learn in Mexico City while I was in a residency for six months. So learning to weave in a backstrap loom, loom was very fascinating because it, it's one of the extremes of the loom is attached to your own body. So I think somehow your energy or your tension is transmitted to the weavings. The other cool thing about the backstrap loom is that it's very portable. So I, I've been weaving while I was traveling <clears throat> between Austin Spain, and even in Mexico. So all the weavings are made by hand and the colors are all extracted from natural um, pigments, like from plants, seeds, uh, wood, even insects. For example, the green one on my back, uh, it's made or is the result of mixing indigo blue with Zacatlaxcali. The Zacatlaxcali, which is a very difficult word for me to pronounce still, is the the plant that gi would give us a yellow. So the mix of the yellow with the blue turns into this uh, green. And depending on the proportion or what you use first as a base, you will get a green that goes towards the blue or a green that goes towards the yellow, which is the case of this one. So the purple textile is made using cochinilla. Cochinilla or cochineal in English is a little insect that grows attached to a cactus that grows in Mexico City. I heard that it also grows here in, in Texas, which is interesting. Um, but what they, what they do is they pick these little insects one by one and somehow these guys die when you disattach them from the cactus. So when they are dry, uh, there is a whole process to extract the pigment. You have to grind them by hand and then boil the, that, that powder. It's like a very thin powder. And then after several times, it, you extract that red uh, pigment that, for example, if you were dyeing wool, it would be a, a vibrant red. And when you use it with cotton, it kind of uh, dimes it a little bit and it becomes this purple. 
And also the color depends on the conditions, like on the temperature, the quality of the water. So everything changes and all these colors are unique and probably you cannot repeat them. So Studies for Future Objects, which is the title of this show, refers, I guess, more to the potential of these species becoming something else. I'm not interested in creating a specific narrative, but maybe a space for potential meaning, maybe function also. And this is the aim of the title. I believe that these works offer unlimited possibilities of interpretation and that starts with each one of the viewers. <laughs>